in the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. Anybody can buy a lowrider, but to build one to reflect your taste is a whole different beast. The car that I have now is a 1959 Chevrolet Impala convertible. It belonged to a member from Lifestyle. And in order for him to, to join Lifestyle, he had to move to LA from Japan. I really liked the color, but I wanted to give it my own taste, my own twist. So I decided to keep the body, the deep candy purple, which would kind of hold on to the history of the car because I didn't want to lose that. That's why I kept the, the decals from the parking in Japan and everything. I didn't want to lose that history. I patterned out the dash. I kept it the same as a 350. It has a fuel injection port, and I think a 72 spoke just gives it a more classic feel to it, so that's why I decided to go that way. I still live on the same block as my friends, my childhood friends, and his older brother, Dino, he used to have couple low riders. So as a kid, you know, he used to be like, hey, you guys are in the car show? And like, we're like, oh yeah, let's go. All right, but once we get there, you guys gotta pay your fee. You guys gotta clean the car and everything. So, you know, he took us, you know, to clean his car and everything, but we took it as like, hey, this is a chance for us to go look at girls and cars and, and the whole, you know, free concert thing. So, it, you know, it just captured me. And after that, when he started getting around in, in car clubs and stuff, and they used to come around and cruise around, and we used to catch that, and we're like, man, that's just so cool. So now we just cruise whenever we get a chance and we just drive all around San Diego. Chicano Park is like the heart of San Diego. In the park itself, there's a lot of history and the murals. Cesar Chavez and all them cats were here. I've been blessed to meet a lot of the, of the muralists. It just gives you a whole different respect for, for, for the struggle that they felt. I dropped out of school when I was 16. My parents separated and everything, so it, it kind of fell on me. I was the oldest, so I started working, trying to help my mom out and everything, and my brothers. So I never had the, the chance to finish school. So when my son was born, I just made a promise to him right then and there, you know, I'm gonna I'm try to do my best for you and I'm gonna try to change my life. I went back to school, finished school. I signed up and I told my wife, you know what, if I never do it, I'm gonna have that biggest regret. I was a combat engineer. I did route clearance. So my job was to look for uh, IEDs, which are improvised explosives. I did five tours. I did four in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. But at that time, during my first tour, we didn't have this high-tech equipment that you know we have now. Back then, it was just your eyes. So we used to literally drive like five miles an hour trying to find these devices. I had my plaque with me. I had my car cloud plaque with me. To me, it, it was a sense of you know still being part of something back home. So I had my family, I had my wife and my kids, of course, you know. But that was just another avenue, something to keep me sane. My last tour, my platoon got tasked out to go help out another company up, up north. And on the way up there, we were passing a checkpoint, which is uh, an Afghan police checkpoint. And for some reason, there was barbed wire and everything across the road, and it made no sense. Over there, they have a lot of little culverts because uh, when it rains, all the wadis and everything, it, it tends to, to flood the roads. And as we were going over a culvert, an IED hit my truck. I ended up getting off the gun truck, kept my guys in there, did a quick check. The other medic on the other gun truck, he opens his door and I'm like, I'm turning around. I say, dude, close the door, get inside. When that happened, I turn around and I'm heading to the recovery truck. The secondary went off of that one. I remember like just hitting the ground, that was it. I lift my head and I look towards where the recovery truck was and, and I see all this smoke and I see everything and I don't see nobody moving inside. At that time, all the other gun trucks started opening up and the whole time I'm just looking at them like, man, like give me some signal. And then the um, passenger, we made eye contact and he just gave me a thumbs up. But the whole time I was like, man, I just lost two of my guys, you know? And it was like, just the thought of it, you know, it just, it still bothers me. When I got back from, from tour, I was flagged to see medical. That's when they, you know, they figured that a couple of discs on my neck and my back, 
you know, were, were, were damaged and everything. So after that, um, I tried to, they tried to rehab me for like a year. It wasn't working out and they ended up doing a medical discharge on me. When I first got back, you know, I was wired. Like I was, I did not know how to, how to flip that switch. You know, I was, I was like always ready to get in a fight. Like I was just on it. I was just one time, you know, I woke up and I was choking my wife and I'm cussing at her in Arabic, you know? And then I'm like, man. And I just remember I look in her face and I was like, you know, I just told her like, you know, I need help. And that's the day I went in and I seeked help. The thing that helped me, like for me, out of everything, it was low riding. When I would order a part, I was like a kid. Like I had something to look forward to. Like, man, I can't, can't wait. You know, and once I got it and I started working on the engine, started working on this, so now you start progressing. You know, when, when I, we ended up taking this car apart, I put so much attention into it and so much work into it that, you know, the problems that, 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 were, that were bugging me and everything, it, it, they, they weren't there because I didn't, I didn't have the time to think about it. It's what helped me get through it, you know? It, the, the, the lifestyle that, that, that I'm living now, which, you know, it involves a lot of the low riding, it's, it's incorporating a lot of family time into it. So now, like, when my son hears the car turn on, he knows we're gonna go spend some time. He relates car and, and the club and, and everything that goes with it, the car shows and the events as family time. Right now, I'm, I'm retired. I, I need something to, to put all this energy and all these thoughts and ideas into, and what better way than to help my brothers. 22 veterans that commit suicide every day. I could have been one of them, because I was in a real deep rut, you know? Putting information out there, especially the awareness with all these guys committing suicide, or all these guys going homeless, or all these guys going through financial times. That's my job, to, to continue to like push it, you know, to help them. There's a VFW right here in Logan. I'm their post commander, so now I'm pretty much run that that place. You know, low riding has a stereotype for being game bangers and being drug dealers and being this and that, which honestly is far from the truth. I know a lot of low riders are professional, and it's the same thing with with uh, VFW. The stereotype is old people in there just drinking cheap beer. What I've been trying to do is tear down that wall. One of the things about us is that we want to be involved with our community. I mean, we want to feel a sense of we're still serving. The building that we're in, you know, it, it needs a new roof. So since that's been my number one goal since I took over, I started doing a lot of fundraising events. Geared at that, I started bringing a lot of bands. You know, the whole district in Logan Heights is changing. It's starting to be a more arts and more, you know, musical and more food now. So, you know, I was like, man, this is the perfect time to try to like convince these dudes. And that's all we want. We want to be engaged, you know what I mean? We still want to serve, and and what better way to serve than by continuing to help people that are in need or, or veterans that are in need? There's a lot of organizations that do that, but to a veteran, you know, it means a lot more if it comes from another veteran because that was your brother. Now, I can't help everybody, but I mean, I'm gonna try. You know, I know it's impossible, but it doesn't mean that you stop trying. Serve my country is one of the proudest things I've done. You know, I I regret the time I miss from my family but I think they understand now the sacrifices that I did for them. And you know, that's, that's what makes it worth it. You know, that they get it now, they, they understand. I'm Miguel Alatorre and I'm a low rider role model.